In this video, you're going to learn how to work with writing equations of functions that have been transformed. And we're going to go through four examples together with multi-parts. I want you to learn how to write these equations. I'm going to show you some tips and techniques. So let's dive into this video. The first thing you want to know is this function notation. This is going to change everything for you, especially with the more difficult problems. So let's go over the basics and then we'll get into some problems. When you look at f of x, that represents like your original function. If you add this k value to it, what it does is if it's positive, it's going to shift the graph up. If it's negative, it's going to shift the graph down. So when you think of f of x, it's kind of like the quote unquote y values. y is like the vertical direction. And by adding, let's say, 2 to that, you're going to shift it up 2. If you're subtracting 2, you're going to go down 2. Now when the h here is grouped with the x, like in the parentheses or underneath the square root or in the absolute value bars. When it's with the x, we know that it's going to affect the horizontal uh, direction, the x direction, as I like to say, if it's grouped with the x. But it has the opposite effect. What I mean by that is if it's like x plus 2, you're actually going to shift the graph left 2. If it's x minus 2, you're going to go right to. So it's a little counterintuitive, but what I like to think of is group with the x, it's affecting the x coordinates or the horizontal direction, not group with the x, affecting the y direction in the same manner, okay? Now let's look over here, negative f of x. This negative is like multiplying by negative 1. And remember, f of x is like our quote unquote y values. If you multiply those y values by negative 1, that's going to reflect the graph over the x axis. If you multiply the x values by negative 1, see how the negative is grouped with the x, that's going to make the x values the opposite sign, and that's going to reflect it over the y-axis. And then over here, if you have this a value multiplied by f of x, like say for example if a was 2, that would be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. If it was 1 half, it would be a vertical shrink. <clears throat> so when you take the absolute value, if it's greater than 1, we say it's a stretch. If you take the absolute value and it's between 0 and 1, like a half, a third, a fourth, that's a vertical shrink. Now, if this was negative 2, you've got two things going on there. The negative is going to reflect it over the x-axis, and the 2 is going to be a vertical stretch. And then lastly over here, when let's say you had f of 2x, okay, when it's grouped with the x like this and it's multiplied, Again, remember, group of the x is affecting the horizontal direction or the x values, but it's having the opposite effect. Meaning you would think if this was 2x, it would multiply the x's by 2 and be a horizontal stretch. But no, it's actually the reciprocal. It's multiplying the x's by 1 half. Uh, if their a value, the absolute value of a is in between uh, 0 and 1, let's say like a half, it's going to have the reciprocal effect. It's actually going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. So the key takeaways are, and you might want to write these down, is group with the x, affects the x values, the horizontal direction, but in the opposite way, so to speak. If it's not grouped with the x, it's going to affect the y values, the vertical direction, in the same way, so to speak. So let's dive into the examples. You'll see how this works. Number one, given this parent function, f of x equals x squared, which we know is a parabola, that u-shaped graph, we're going to write g of x, okay, that's our new function, such that it is a vertical shrink by a half, and then it translates down to. Now, some students like to dive into this and just say, ah, I got it, you know. But you might want to take it slowly in the beginning. And what I mean by that is use this function notation. So you might want to say something like this, like h of x equals 1 half times uh, f of x. So what I'm doing is I'm using this function right here. See the a value times f of x. That's going to give us a vertical shrink since a is between 0 and 1. Okay, see how it's multiplied. But what is f of x? f of x is equal to x squared. So I could put this in here and say, oh, this is 1 half x squared. Okay, now the next step is we want to do a translation down to. When you shift, it's going to be like adding and subtracting. When you stretch or shrink, it's going to be like multiplying or dividing. So just remember, adding and subtracting is going to be a shift. You're picking it up and a multiplying and dividing is going to be a stretch or shrink, depending on the, the numbers, right? So translating down to, okay, this is kind of an easy one, it's going to be f of x plus k, right? So in this case, it's going to be, let's call this g of x now, our new function, is going to be our old function, h of x, right? Down to is going to be negative 2. Remember, it's not grouped with the x, it's affecting the y values. Minus 2 does mean, you know, down 2. But what's h of x? Oh, it's this 1 half x squared. So let's put that in place of h of x. And now we have our final function here, g of x, which is what we were trying to uh, write. And that's our 
translated function. Now, what happens if you change the order? So say, for example, same problem, x squared, but we're going to translate down to first. Then we're going to do a vertical shrink by a half. Are we going to get the same equation? No, we're not. So let's see why that is. So starting with uh, h of x, okay, you can call your function whatever you want. It's just in the very end, we want it to be g of x, because that's just what they're saying is to write the function as g of x. So I'm just picking h of x. And I want to go down to, now I know going down to, that's this notation here. We take the original function and we subtract 2. But what's our original function? Oh, it's x squared. So I'm just going to put that in its place. So that's where we're at right now. That's the first transformation. Then we're going to take this and do a vertical shrink by one half. So how do we do a vertical shrink? Well, that's this function notation right here where we say, oh, a g of x is equal to one half times h of x. That's this previous function, right? So h of x is this whole thing right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in parentheses, treat it like a group, and I'm going to distribute that one half into the parentheses. So what does that give us? Let me put the answer over here. Uh, g of x, our new function, g of x, is equal to one half x squared minus one. So what do you notice here? They're not the same, see? And so the order is very important when you do these equations and you're doing the transformation. So take it one step at a time. Uh, some students will say, well, you know, my favorite thing to do is to do the vertical shift up and down because it's easy, I just have to do that. But if it's not the first step, you might get a different answer for your final answer. So that's a little caveat or warning. Let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do example number two. Okay, hang with me. I'm trying to do a little different example for each of these examples, showing different types of transformations. So in this next example, a little bit different, we've got the square root of x as our parent function, but we want to find g of x such that it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. Then we're shifting it right one. Okay, so that order is important. So going to our notation here, what's going to stretch it horizontally by a factor of three? Well, that's going to be this one right here where it's group with the x multiplied. But if we want it to be a horizontal stretch, we're actually going to have to make that a value one third. So this is going to be like this. Let's write the notation. We'll say h of x is equal to f of one third x. Okay. Remember, it's counterintuitive. When it's group of the x, it's affecting the x direction, but in the opposite way. So if you're adding two, you're actually like subtracting two, you're going left two. Uh, if you're multiplying by one third, you're actually multiplying by the reciprocal by three. So I kind of call it like the opposite effect when it's group of the x. But now look at what happens. When we have a function, what do we do? We say whatever's in the parentheses, that goes in for place in place of x on the right. That's how we work with functions, right? So in this case, what we have is h of x equals the square root of one-third x. So I just replace this x with one-third x, okay? Now, the next step is to shift right one. So shifting right or left, that's going to be this notation right here where it's group of the x, okay? And so the notation we want here, let's call this g of x now, is equal to h of x minus one. Why minus one? Remember, it's the opposite, so that's going to actually shift it right one. If it was plus one, it would go left one. But remember, how do functions work? Whatever's in the parentheses here goes in place of x on the right, okay? If there's more than one x, they'll all be replaced with whatever's inside the parentheses here. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace x with this quantity, x minus one. So it's going to look like this. g of x is equal to the square root of one-third x minus one. And that's your final result. Okay, let's look at part B. Now, it's pretty much the same problem, but in the reverse order. Now we're going to shift right one first, then we're going to horizontally stretch it by a factor of three. Do you think we're going to get the same equation? Probably not, right? But let's take a look, doing this step. So try this on your own if you feel like you're getting the hang of it. Just to practice, it's okay if you make a mistake. Shifting right one, we know that that's going to be f of x minus one, right? We take our original function, okay, and we're going to replace x with x minus 1. So that's going to look like this. Okay, now g of x, we want it to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. That notation is going to be h of 1 third x, right? Again, remember when it's group of the x, it has the reciprocal effect. So we're going to be multiplying the x's by 3, horizontally stretching it. Whatever's in parentheses 
goes in for x on the right. So that's going to give us g of x is equal to the square root of 1 third x minus 1. Okay, what do you think? Are they the same? No, they're different. See here, this is in parentheses. Here we don't have any parentheses. So the way that the equation is written is very important. So let me erase the whiteboard. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for number three, try this one on your own if you want to get some practice and then you can check it with what we're going to do right here. But while you're doing that, I want to let you know that if you like the way that I explain things and you want to go deeper learning with me, join as a channel member at the additional videos level and you can have access to all my math courses like my pre-calculus and Algebra 2 and College Algebra and Algebra 1 and Geometry, uh, as well as like midterm and final exam reviews. And I also have some ACT and SAT prep videos on there as well. Almost 400 videos on that uh, additional videos level at the channel member section of Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel. So check that out. But let's go ahead and uh, look at number three now. So find g of x such that it is a reflection over the x-axis, then shift up four. Reflection over the x-axis. So that's this one right here, negative f of x. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hmm, h of x, kind of like our next step in this transformation process is negative f of x. But what's f of x? That's the absolute value of x. So let's substitute that in here in place of f of x. Then we want to shift up 4. What shifts up and down? That's this one right here, right? This notation. So we're going to say h of x, e ooh, let's change this to g of x. Sorry, I got a little excited there. g of x is equal to h of x, that's this previous function, plus 4 since it's shifting up 4. But what's h of x? That's this whole thing right here. We're going to put that in place of h of x, which is going to give us our final function, g of x, which is equal to negative absolute value of x plus 4. Eventually, you'll be able to do all these just in your head. You'll say, okay, yep, got it, right? But in the beginning, you might want to take it step by step, except for, especially when it's a more challenging one. Okay, for part B, we're going to shift uh, four, um, up for first, and then we're going to reflect it over the x-axis. So we're changing the order. So let's start with uh, h of x. Uh, shifting up 4, that's this guy right here. So it's going to be f of x plus 4. But what's f of x? Oh, it's the absolute value of x. Okay, that's our first step, done. Then reflect over the x-axis. That's this notation right here, negative f of x, or in this case, we're going to call g of x equals negative 1 times h of x. But what's h of x? That's this whole thing right here. So we're going to replace that. We get g of x equals a negative, and instead of h of x, we're going to put h of x in here. So this is going to be, I'll put it in parentheses. We'll do this in steps. Okay, so now when I distribute that negative, what do I get? I get negative absolute value of x minus 4 is a g of x. So is it the same? No, see plus 4 here is minus 4. So they're definitely different. So the order is super important. So let me erase whiteboard. Let's try the last example. See if you can get this one on your own. Okay, for number 4 now, we're given this parent function f of x equals x cubed. We want to find g of x, our new function, such that it is a reflection over the y-axis, followed by a shift left 5. How would you do that one? Well, going to our notation here with functions, if I want to do a reflection over the y-axis, that's going to be this one right here. So I'm going to say h of x equals f of negative x. Now remember, the way functions work, whatever's in parentheses goes in place of x on the right. So that means this is going to be negative x, the quantity cubed. Now you might say, Mario, should I simplify that? Let's just leave it um, as it is for right now. Now if we go shift left 5, that's going to be this one right here. But remember, if we want to shift left 5, it's actually going to be not negative 5, but positive 5. Kind of the opposite of what you would normally think, right? So we'll say g of x equals h of x plus 5. That shifts at left 5. Now whatever's in the parentheses, okay, of the h function, that's going to go in place of x here, which is going to give us g of x equals negative, okay, now in place of x, I'm going to put this in parentheses, since it's a binomial, x plus 5, the quantity cubed. So I'm just going to leave it like that, just to kind of illustrate, you know, the transformations that we did. Now for part b, same problem more or less, except for the orders, uh, 
in reverse. We're shifting left phi first, then we're reflecting over the y-axis. So how would you do that one? Well, let's start with h of x equals shifting left phi, that's this notation right here, it's gonna be f of x plus five. Plus five, you would think that's going to the right, but remember, when it's grouped with the x, it has the opposite effect, it's shifting left five. Whatever's in the parentheses goes in for x on the right, so this is actually gonna be x plus five, the quantity cubed. Okay, but then we wanna reflect it over the y-axis. So what reflects it over the y-axis? by multiplying all the x-coordinates by negative one is gonna reflect it over. So we're using this notation right here, we're gonna say g of x is equal to h, since that was our previous function. You know, that's why I'm not using the f, I'm saying h is our previous one, f, uh, h of negative x. Now whatever's in the parentheses here goes in place of x on the right. So what's that gonna give us? It's gonna give us g of x is equal to negative x plus five cubed. So what do you think, are they the same? Mm, they don't look the same. So if you were to distribute this negative, this would be negative x minus five, the quantity cubed. This is negative x plus five, the quantity cubed. So definitely different. So there's a lot to working with transformations. Here we were basically focused on working with, you know, writing the equations, which is oftentimes difficult for students. But we can talk about the graphing and, you know, when you're given the equation to describe the transformations. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a link to a playlist that I put together, a short playlist with some videos uh, I've done working on transformations. So follow me over to that playlist and let me help you master these transformations. I'll see you over in those videos.